<laughs> so, yeah, I'm Ilya. It's wonderful to see you all here. It's a geospatial dev room, which means we use, we like, and we work with maps. And we do that in multiple ways. Like yesterday, I believe most of you had to find your restaurant for the evening or your hotel. Who did open their map app and type something into search field? Oh, you, you see, <laughs> that's a lot more than I expected. And that's the thing that we do often, just typing things into application. And the application gives you uh, coordinates, location where you go to. That is called geocoding, converting your phrase into uh, a location on the map. And that's one of the three pillars of applied cartography. Finding things, plotting a route, displaying a map. But when you take a geospatial specialist and make him or her work on geocoding, I doubt they, they will like it. Because underneath all that, geocoding is not exactly a mapping problem. It's more of a language processing problem. You take a phrase, you split it by tokens, you do a full text search, return a result. It's not about maps at all. But the reverse problem, given a location, producing a uh, understandable string uh, or address is much more interesting and challenging, as I found out. I was tasked with installing a reverse geocoder at my last job in uh, Juno, that's a uh, ride-sharing operator in New York. And uh, instead of using one of the pre-built solutions like Nominatim, I decided to try to write my own geocoder. Because how hard can it be? Like, uh, how do you know you're in Belgium right now? Uh, given your location, you, you can just take uh, a set of country polygons and do a simple point in polygon search. And you will get a result, like Belgium, which you can produce to a user. Point in polygon is one of the basic operations in geospatial. It's highly optimized. There are very fast algorithms. You can do that thousand times a second. Uh, and you can find your country. Except in the real, real world, sometimes you can do, get two or three countries at once. Like uh, on the river, I think between Luxembourg and Germany that belongs to both countries. Or disputed territories like Crimea or anything. Sometimes you can get no countries at all. Not only in oceans, but also there are unclaimed territories like in Africa and stuff. You have to convey it some, somehow to a user who requested the coordinates. The same for regions, uh, but when, how do you get a city? Like, uh, how do you know you're in Brussels, for example? Again, you can take a, a set of uh, city boundary polygons and find out, yeah, you're in Brussels. But what if you're in a smaller town or a village and there are no databases of village polygons? All you get are points. Like, how many people can fit in a single point? Thousands of them, because uh, many towns and even cities often reside in any databases like points. So what you need is finding a nearest point. And that is, again, a basic operation in geospatial. Uh, it's uh, indexed, it's optimized, you can do that a lot. Uh, but cities are different, they are of different sizes. Uh, sometimes there are both point and polygon for a city, like in OpenStreetMap. There are points for city regions, neighborhoods. And to know where you are, you have to make a lot of uh, queries. Point and polygon for countries, for regions, nearest point for cities. Uh, rank them, choose what you need. That's a lot of queries, and these can take a long time. You have to optimize it. And one of the useful things 
are Voronoi polygons. Basically, for each point, they build a polygon from inside which uh, that point is the, the nearest one. With that, basically, you convert your nearest point request to point and polygon request. And doing a bit more uh, bounding, a bit more optimization, preprocessing, and uh, you can get the entire administrative hierarchy from country to city neighborhood in just one query, very fast one. That's how do administrative queries. But frankly, the question which city I am in doesn't come up often. No more often than what year it is. It can come handy, but uh, not for most people. I know I'm Brussels. What I'm in interested in is more precise, precise location, which means address, which means house number and a street. For most countries, it's house number and street. How do you know that? There are multiple open databases with address locations, which means coordinate and address. You can use uh, them very simply. You can find nearest point uh, again and get your address. Like, wh what is address for the red point? You can shout. <laughs> No, it, it, it's, it's K7. <laughs> okay. Which point is that? This one. Um, I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, yes. Given this database, it's K7. It's a pretty close answer, except that in uh, many countries, addresses are given not to entrances, like in Brussels, not to points, but to buildings. That's the case for the United States, for Russia, for Belarus, for... Quite a lot of countries, actually. And since buildings are not points, these results can sometimes be not very specific, not very precise. But thankfully, we use OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap has a lot of building polygons with addresses on them. So the task of finding an address for a point for reverse geocoding, in most cases, is very simple. You just uh, find a nearest addressed object in the database and your set. And that is how virtually every reverse geocoder in the world works, including nominating. They keep a database of addressed objects and they find the closest one and return its address. Very fast, very simple, uh, works in most cases except some corner cases. Which corner cases? Like corner, bu corner buildings. Uh, they often have addresses, they're addressed by two streets or more streets thereon. How do you map that? Like, uh, because it's one object, it ha can have two similar prop different properties. Well, in OpenStreetMap, uh, anything goes. So people just add. Uh, two address points inside and uh, are done with it. So what is the address we expect to know about this formerly red point? <laughs> so well, somebody answered K5, why? Yes, exactly. You're on K Street. You, if you give a P6 address, then your car or your friends will wait at the wrong side of the building. So you need K5. But here, if you employ nearest object uh, lookup, you will get the wrong address. Why, why is that? Yeah. Uh, so it turns out that some points need special processing. Like when an address point is inside the building, it's not actually a point, it's a property of the building. So it doesn't matter how far it is. You just uh, take distance of cl closest building and take address from a point. And you can, can imagine your imaginary query 
for looking up an address becomes much more complex because it's not a nearest object anymore. It's not point, about point and polygon. It's a special processing in which you find closest building, then find points inside it and find a proper address point and so on. And in OpenStreetMap, it can be even worse. Like a building can have many addresses on different streets, like up to four streets. And you might need to find a proper location, proper address description for any point, including points inside the buildings. What is the address for this point? I don't know. It can be anything. <laughs> but you have to produce a string that will be understandable, that people will know how did you come with this string. And in OpenStreetMap, anything goes. So th these were simple cases. There are m more interesting cases. Like, for example, a location inside a building that has an address itself, that has addressed point with different address inside, and there is also a cafe with different address. So this can be there for different reasons. So is it here number 14 or still 16? Because this point is not too far. And cafe most definitely is about just a single entrance and move away a bit and it's a different address. Uh, so in these cases, you have to come up with uh, ranking different objects, how they influence the outcome uh, correctly, uh, find distances on which addresses work and so on. Uh, and again, in OpenStreetMap, you can find anything like address building inside an address building with different addresses. This might be correct because it's one is underground. We had to fight the, for this case. And there are addresses can go in anything, including territories. So like imagine a school with a very big yard. It's fenced and the, ho the entire school has got an address. And when you're standing at the point, which address would you like to give to your friend to meet? Is it, is it K5, like who knows where it is? Or K6, which is across the road. It's farther from, from you, but seems like more correct. And you have to account for that in your hypothetical query for looking up an address. Like uh, in this case, we might pre-process the data to move address from a territory to the biggest building site. OpenStreetMap data model provides multiple challenges, some of which are quite hard, even for me, <laughs> uh, like address interpolation. What is the address of that point? Anybody? <laughs> take, take a guess. Yeah, K, for example, K6. It's plausible. You just uh, find nearest point on the interpolation line. Interpolation means there are uh, multiple sequential numbers on that line from 2 to 16. So maybe K6. But in the real world, there might be no such building. There might be K2, K10, and K16, and that's all. So using just interpolation data, you will give a user a non-existing address. Is it OK to give, give them that? It's roughly uh, precise, but if they type that address into a different app, they will find nothing, and it, it just won't work. So there are multiple things you have to consider while doing reverse. Uh, geocoding and it's all quite fun to do, especially when testing. And the point of this talk is all I've been talking about is real. It happens in OpenStreetMap database and the geocoder uh, that I've been writing uh, accommodates for these cases. Like uh, all these came through testing on the real OpenStreetMap data. Uh, the geocoder was published, it was uh, installed in production, it could perform like 50 queries per second. 
uh, it performs better than nominating and other geocoders because it's not just merely addressed object. It knows about all these corner cases. And it is open source. Uh, it was written for Juno company and Juno company has ceased to be. It's uh, no more X company. Uh, but I don't want it to be buried among GitHub open source projects. So I urge you to open this link and just take a look because it's uh, several dozens of screens of SQL code, heavily commented with hundreds of unit integration tests. It really seem, it's really simple to deploy. It has Docker container. It has, I don't know, it works on a pretty plain OSM to PGSQL database. And it's, it's very fast. We, I don't work on that anymore because I'm now in a different company, but I'll be happy to find some more corner cases to think about how to accommodate for them and maybe to improve this and see this geocoder used. So, thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, the first one. Uh, what's the reason you don't use this as your query component? Because my current company doesn't use OpenStreetMap for geocoding. <laughs> they, it's much, much bigger. I work in Lyft now. Uh, and it has their own data with different constraints. Thank you. Yeah. Second question, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what, what, uh, is, is addressing as it is now a close enough to lead to the abstractions? Uh, in other words, what practical problem are you solving? Uh, or taxi company? Well, uh, I'm solving a problem of making an address easy to understand, easy to pronounce, because many taxi drivers do not use taxi app for navigation. They switch to Waze or Google Maps, they type in the address, and they go to the point. So the address has to be uh, correct so that uh, they plot a correct route. And basically, that, that's it, that you need a location that's easy to understand enough. And uh, services like what Rewards or Plusco, they don't solve this because few people have can process these codes. Okay, next yeah. question. Can you go back one slide, please? Of course. It's uh, the same, uh, same link if you use QR codes. But yeah. Uh, had, yeah, you had a question? Uh, no, 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 let's, I think yeah. she, she asked. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm wondering what's the ge geographical coverage of these two, and maybe of all these three maps in, in general. How good will it be, for example, to work in countries where there's not precise address, like African countries, like just some mm. buildings or even Arab world? Mm -hmm. um, what work in general be done, maybe you know, in Africa to locate buildings, but mm. to think? Right, so will, will it work in Africa or other countries with low building and address coverage? Uh, it will work no worse than any other reverse geocoder, obviously, but uh, in countries with no established uh, street name, house number address, uh, it may show some weird results, but, but again, it depends on addressing model in OpenStreetMap. Like uh, in Japan, it probably won't work because the addresses there is very different. It, it was written specifically for uh, American addresses, but uh, many countries, including uh, West Eastern European countries, uh, share the schema, so it will work. But I am, will, would be pretty happy to see some test cases <laughs> and current cases from other countries. Okay, we have time for one last question. So, uh, have you nominated in the past the reverse yoga photos, like several million photos to sort out where they're from? Uh, but this edge case didn't work well. Uh, would this still be better at it? I, I guess so. <laughs> 
uh, as long as you don't need uh, point of interest information, like Eurocab is having an address instead of you know, Empire State Building uh, or some name. Yeah, so as long as you need country, city, street and house number, this should be better. Uh, and it, it's faster because it's just uh, SQL queries for PostgreSQL and it has lower footprint. I think it's twice, uh, sm database is uh, two times smaller than nominating database. Uh, so it should work. Okay, that's the final question, a short one. What does the name stand for and how the hell do you pronounce it? It's G GRG, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I've, only pro I've only pronounced it in Russian, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, a crime of uh, June reverse geocoder. We were fighting like three days on a name and uh, decided to go with the simplest one. Okay, that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you.